I'm back. I mean, I never went anywhere, but I'm back. Imagine I did go somewhere and this is me returning. It's been like 95 days since I last uploaded a video as of today, which is like the 17th of the month. And I kind of looked at that number and went, wow, I've not uploaded in a while. I should probably get something up there because you know, the millions, the millions. The fans are waiting. That's not why I did it. Why I did it was because I was looking at my analytics and today my most watched video to date still is how to install Ubuntu server 22.04 with RAID. And I kind of looked at that and went, that's, that's, that's incredible. People are still clicking on that video more than any of my other videos. This channel is about Kubernetes. My number five is how to use SSH to remotely access the server. Don't get me wrong, there's Kubernetes stuff in there, but it amazes me how much of my Linux stuff is still in there. And I hate those videos. They're so bad. Like, I don't know why people still watch them. They're terrible. I mean, I don't think my videos are great, but those are awful. Like, I used to straighten up my hair because I thought I had to look good for YouTube because apparently that mattered. It just, just, no, no, okay? So I looked at that and I went, it's time to knock that one off the top. It's time to get rid of that. I, I don't want that to be the video that people click on for me the most. I don't want that to be the impression that people have. So I'm going to start a new video up. This is going to be Ubuntu 24.04 with RAID. And hopefully it will kick that one off the top spot. And I'm not here for the clicks. I'm not here to be famous or anything like that. I just want that video gone more than anything. That's all it is. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, people aren't waiting on me every week. I'm not Jimmy. I'm not Ryan. I'm not Chuck. I'm not, you know, I'm not Jeff. I'm not these big famous tech guys, you know, I'm none of these people and I don't intend to be. I'm here to teach you stuff. That is it. That's that's why we're here and that's what we're gonna do today. To do that, we need to go through Ubuntu 2204, 2404, not 2204. So let's go ahead and start installing that stuff. So jumping over to the screen, we've got the website with Ubuntu 24.04 download available. Make sure you click the right one. If you wanna get an alternative version, make sure you do that. But I'm gonna be in just downloading this one, the main one. I have already downloaded it. I'm not going to do it now. It's already done. And I'm going to set it up on Hyper-V. So if you want to set this up on your main machines, like you've got an actual server somewhere with multiple disks and you want to set up RAID, this will work. It's absolutely fine. I'm just setting up on Hyper-V because I'm on Windows here and it just, you know, it's there. Might as well use it. So what I've done is I've set up a machine with eight gig of RAM, four virtual processors and two hard disks. That's it. Nothing fancy going off there. I've also got the ISO image there. So we'll just go ahead and click OK. I'm going to click Start and get going. So we'll get prompted with this screen first. This is just the installation grub. So we'll just click Try or Install Ubuntu. So I'm going to click OK on that. So I'm going to click Enter on that. There's no OK button on my keyboard. So this has gone through and booted up. I'm just going to select English UK. I'm going to click Continue without updating here. This is just asking if you want to update the installer itself. I've just downloaded this ISO. So, you know, it can't be that out of date. It's probably a little bit out of date, but I can't imagine it's much. I'm just going to click Enter. I'm not gonna update the installer, I don't need to. I'm gonna leave my you know, language and keyboard layout and variant as it is, is English UK, because that's what I have here. I'm gonna go ahead and select minimize the Ubuntu server. So we'll just highlight that and press space and then go down. I don't need to search for any third party drivers, but the options here, so just in case I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna hit space on that and done. Next, we've got the interface. So this is being done via DHCP. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to static IP. This is completely up to you. If you've got a system where DHCP is across the board, just use DHCP. You might manage your IPs on that, in which case, fine, just leave it as that. In this case, I'm gonna imagine I don't have a DHCP server and I need to manually set an IP. Imagine this might be a public IP or something like that. In that case, I'm gonna go ahead and set it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my subnet up. So your subnet in this context is your network, essentially. So this is your entire network configuration, 192.168.0.0 forward slash 24. So this is basically saying that I've got the entire slash 24 subnet available to me on 192.168.0.0 or starting from that. So that's what we're gonna use and press enter to move on to the next line. My address is gonna be 192.168.0.33. I know that's what DHCP set, so I know that's available on my network. I'm just gonna use it. Now, if you know what your IP is gonna be, obviously set it there, DHCP might not be available for you. Gateway, 192.168.0.1. That is the gateway for my network. That's what I'm gonna put in. And now, what I'm gonna use here, name servers. I'll probably use Cloudflare and Google. I could just do all Cloudflare or all Google, but I'm not gonna do that. So I'm going to do 1.1.1.1 and 8.8.4.4. And I'm going to leave my search domains blank. If you need one, set it there. Okay, that's it. That's that done. Go ahead and click done. If you need to create bonds, if you've got network switches with bonding and all that lot, you can do it right there. I don't need that. I don't have that because I'm running on my home PC. So next, I don't need a proxy server. I don't set one up for myself. So that's absolutely fine. Go ahead and click done. This will just test the mirror to make sure your connectivity is okay. It is, so I'm gonna click done. And then now we're gonna set up the disks. I could just hit enter here and carry on and everyone be happy, but we're here to set up RAID. That's what we're doing. So I'm gonna click custom storage layout and click done. This will take us to the partitioning screen. So we've got these two disks here. What we're gonna do first is 
click users boot device on one of them, go to the other disk and then add as another boot device. That will give us one partition on each one. Next, we're going to go ahead and add free space. So what do we need to do here? There's two ways of going about this. The first is to make one large partition on each disk and then raid them, make a raid device from them. Then on that partition, you can start, well, on that raid device, you can start setting up your volume groups and logical volume and all that lot. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go for one partition per volume group. I, I don't have a reason for that other than it's just the way I'm used to doing it. Honestly, there's there's going to be some performance hits and management hits, depending on which one you choose. Someone actually asked me about it in a comment a while back, and I said the same thing. I was like, you know, it just it depends on what you want to do. Just do what's best for you. Like for me, I, I prefer having separate RAID devices per partition just because it logically separates them. That's it. There's no other reason for me doing that. For someone else, they might want to just do one large partition and do you know, volume groups and logical volumes on those partitions. That is also fine. It just it just depends. Just pick what's best for you, okay? The, the performance differences, it's going to be negligible. It's more about how you're managing it afterwards, that's all. So yeah, just pick what's best for you. For me, I'm going to do this, okay? Add partition. I'm going to do a one gig partition. This is going to be my boot partition, but it's a RAID device first. So leave unformatted. And we're going to do that for every single one. We're going to set a size, leave format as unformatted and click create. So this one I'm going to use for swap. So I'll just set this as four gig. If you don't need swap, just skip over this one. Don't add this partition. Finally, the one for the main file system, for the operating system. Then we'll go down to the next disk and we'll do exactly the same. Add GPT, one gig, leave unformatted, create. Four gig, leave unformatted, create. And then finally, we don't enter a size on this one. We leave it as unformatted and we click create. There we go. There's all our partitions. Next, we'll go ahead and create some software RAID. I'm going to leave it as MD0. We're going to set partition two off each disk. So the one gig partition. Make sure it's the right size. Don't just select it based on partition two because you might have weird ordering for some reason. Just make sure the size is the same. So I've got one gig and one gig from each disk. Click create. Back now to create software RAID. Go ahead and leave it as MD1. Select the four gig partition and click create. And then finally, we're going to do the last partition again. And well, the last RAID device, we're going to select partition four and partition four. But this time, I'm actually going to tell you what's going on here. RAID level. So we've got a few different RAID levels here. We've got zero, which is striped. That basically means that some data, of, some of the data is written to one disk. Some of the data is written to the other disk. You Basically, you lose a disk, you lose your data. That's the way it works. RAID one is where the data is written to both disks. So it's written to one, mirrored to the other. So if you lose a disk, you can still recover from the other disk. You've got all your data repeated, mirrored over to the other disk. That is what we're going to do here. That's what we have done here. So raid level one on all of those partitions probably should have said that at the start but you may have noticed i just skipped past that and carried on it's because raid one is the default in ubuntu you've then got raid five which is i think it's block level parity if i remember right so it's block level stripe sorry with parity and you can lose one disc with that before you start losing data so you can lose one disc if you lose another you'll start losing data you've then got raid six which is the same as raid five except if you lose two discs before you start losing data so you can lose two discs if you lose a third you'll start losing data raid 10 is basically mirrored and then striped so you need four discs for that so you'll have so you basically have a a mirrored stripe setup meaning that yeah that's right yeah because it's one zero so you can do zero one raid zero one raid one zero is where you mirror from one disc to another and then those discs are striped into the other one so with with this i'm going to stick with one because i just want to make sure i can lose a disc and recover from the other one if i need to yeah i'm going to delete this vm as soon as the video is finished anyway but just as a example scenario so we'll go ahead and click create on that one. That gives us three RAID devices, MD0, which is our boot one, MD1, which is our swap, and MD2, which is our main file system, the one the operating system will live on. So we've got all that in place now. Let's go ahead and create the volume groups. So we'll go to create volume group, LVM. We'll select MD0 first, that's our boot one. I'm gonna rename VG0 to VG boot and then go ahead and click create. Now, before I do, please encrypt your volumes. You've got create encrypted volumes there. Please make sure you do it. I'm not gonna do it here because I'm gonna delete this VM afterwards, but please make sure you do. So I'll go ahead and click create. Next, I'm gonna select the swap, but this time I'm not gonna create a volume group because there's no need for it. So in here, we'll just do add GPT partition. We'll change it to swap, click create, and that's it. And then finally, we've got one more volume group to create, which I'm gonna call VG hyphen root, select MD2, encrypt your volume again, and then click create. And then that, should be everything there. And all we need to do now is format those partitions. That's it. So we've got a root partition here, create logical volume. I say all we need to do is format it. We're creating a volume, 
a logical volume now, and then that will get formatted as ext4. So leave the size as it is, leave it as ext4, mount it at root, create. So lv0 in vg root is going to be our root partition, essentially. We've then got VG boots, same rule applies, create logical volume. I'll leave it as LV0 because it's LV0 in VG boot this time. If you want to name it something different, by all means do. I always name my volume groups. I should probably name my logical volumes instead, but for the sake of this, I'm just going to name the volume group. Leave the size as it is, format as the XT4 and the mount as boot. Click create. And that is everything. We'll just do a sanity check on it. So we've got VG root, EXT4 mounted at root. We've got VG boot. Formatted is ext4 mounted at boot. And then we've got a swap partition on that MD device. And we've got our bio scrub spaces there. Okay, that's it. So we'll go ahead and click done. Click continue. I'm going to enter my name is Drew. My server's name is Drew again, because you know, well, we'll call it Drew Test. Why not? Username is Drew. Password is password. Don't set your password to be password. Please don't do that. You'll get hacked in no time. Okay. Don't do that, I'm just doing this, because again, as soon as this video is finished, and I've finished recording, I'm deleting this VM. I'm gonna click done. I don't want to use Ubuntu Pro. I do want to install the OpenSSH server, so I'll go ahead and click done on that one, and yeah, we'll just leave that as it is, and I'll skip past all these. I don't need any of these packages, but if you do, there they are. Go ahead and select the ones you want, and click enter. And now we just wait for it to finish. So sit back and twiddle your thumbs for five minutes, if that. Okay, so that's it, it's done. We can go ahead and reboot. Yeah, it's gonna have a moan about not being able to unmount the CD-ROM. Generally speaking, you'll just press enter or just reboot, it's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and just force a reboot of it. So I'll go ahead and somewhere in here, let's just do a shutdown. No, okay, I'm just gonna do a reset then. I mean, it's already done the installation, so I've got no problems with doing that. So I'll go ahead and reset it. I'll just stop it, let's just turn it off, there we go. Let's just do that. But yeah, so generally speaking, it will prompt you to press enter to reboot. I don't know why it didn't just then. I'm guessing it was just probably thinking about it. But that is it. That is the process. We've been through the entirety of setting up Ubuntu 24.04. We've got RAID 1 set up across two different disks. If you want to use more disks in different RAID formats, by all means do. Again, description is down below. And, you know, if you liked the video, you know what to do. There's a little like button down there. Go and press the like button. There we go. It's actually prompting me now. Look. Ugh. Dear me. And if you want to subscribe, go ahead and click subscribe because, you know, it makes me appear in the rankings further. I said I don't care about that stuff, but I'm, you know, it's it's nice when people watch, I guess, you know. It means I'm reaching more people, that's all. So yeah, we're just gonna wait for it to reboot. And I'm just kind of filling time here and talking away. And I'll just make sure it boots basically. That's what I'm gonna do here. So it's gonna reboot. It's actually coming up right now. You can see it's really quickly done it. And there you go, we've got the system booted. And if I put Drew in, and my password of password, and there we go, bam. So that's it, Ubuntu 2404. Kick that Ubuntu 2204 off the top of that video list, yeah? That's what this is about. And obviously bringing it up to date and all that good stuff. Anyway, the point is, we're done, that's it. I'm not gonna go into any further stuff if you wanna learn about SSH. As I say, it's like one of the top videos on my list apparently, so go and check that one out. Just don't judge the way I look or anything else, you know, straight hair, it's lovely. And yeah, that's it, I'll see you in the next one, but remember the next ones are gonna be Kubernetes ones. I've got a list of them there. There is a bunch of stuff for me to go through. If I actually have a look now, I mean, there's stuff on Argo, Authentic, Cluster API, Helm, Istio, Kubernetes in itself, there's a few extra videos I wanna do on that. Some around monitoring with Prometheus and Grafana, the stuff with uh, Open Policy Agent stuff around Vault again. I'm gonna do a little bit more on that. There's a bunch of stuff that I've got ideas for that I wanna do. It's just finding the time at the moment. So as I find time, I'll, I'll make more videos. I'm gonna start up at the moment. We are hands on deck, all hands on deck right now. It is so busy and we're doing quite well. So, you know, I actually wanna make it work. And obviously I've got a small child as well to take care of. So she takes up a lot of time. Obviously not complaining about that, but it's just a reality of the situation. I don't get much time to do these videos anymore. So. If you do want to wait for another one, stick around, click subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and you'll see me in the next one.